I am so excited you're part of the show today and I'm more excited about my guest today. Oh my God, if you know how long it took me to bring him here. Oh God. You know, Yoruba will say, I will make be a janla. You know what that means? My net has caught a big fish. Yes, I've got a big fish in the studio with me today. On Talk to Be, as usual, we bring different people with different stories. We educate you. And today is not going to be different because you will learn a lot. So I have my brother, someone, my, my colleague, someone that I respect so much because of uh, his humility, his, um, his intelligence, his... Is everything and more. But before I introduce my guest, I would like to go for a short break. And when I'm back, you will meet my guest. My name is Dr. Abiola Adebayo Akimide. Stay tuned. Talk to be. Talk to be. Share your experience. Thank you guys for staying tuned. In case you're just joining us, you're watching Talk to Be. It's Talk to Be, baby. And like I said earlier, that my net has finally caught a big fish. Yes, it's a big fish. Is known by all of you. But he's my brother. But before I got him here, Sha, you will not know that he's my brother. <laughs> but I'm happy he's able to make it. I'm so biased about him. I know that. He's my favorite. He's your favorite. Join me as we welcome Adebo Wale Adedayo, popularly known as Mr. Macaroni. Yeah. <laughs> Professor Hard Life is here. He will make your life. <laughs> Please don't make our people's life hard. I'll try. It's I'll try. hard. I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Adebo Ali, thank you so much for coming thank on the you. show. Thank you for having me. I know how busy you are. I know your schedule. I know, in fact, for anybody that lives in Lagos, I yes. know if they show up here, I really, really appreciate the time, the effort put into this. Yes. And this, aside our normal relationship, yes. this means a lot to all of us. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. <laughs> okay, so I always turn up for you. Any, any you time. know, oh, you. <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, of course I know um, Adibo Ali has granted a lot of interview. He, you I'm know sure. him; <laughs> he's there. But on Talk to Be, what we do is we we go a little bit deeper. We mm. talk about things that people do not know about you. Mm -hmm. We learn from you, your mistakes, the past, and everything. So Talk to Be is actually deeper than just a podcast. Right. So let's start from meeting you aside the mr macaroni that all of us know yeah. who is adebo ali oh uh, well debo adebo ali <laughs> <I did that. laughs> let me start from when i was growing up growing up they used to call me papa <laughs> my siblings especially mama mm -hmm. so it was diola and i diola is my Elder, Elder sister. sister. Yeah, so she was mama and papa. And then, but well, everyone around there used to call me Tunde, Baba Tunde. That's actually the first name people mm -hmm. used to call me, but I have quite a number of names. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and then I was born into a Muslim family. Yes, Ramadan Karim, by the way. Your what? <laughs> I said Ramadan Karim. Ramadan we're for, Karim. Uh, we're okay. Oh, we are sorry, Ramadan yes. Karim. <laughs> and so, the Christians are also going through. It's length period, right? Yes, yes, Happy actually. Fasting. Muslim plus Christian. <laughs> and that's the beauty of it because yes, uh, my dad is a Muslim, my mom is a With Christian. A Christian. So, um, but the beautiful thing about my our family is my dad is liberal. Um uh, to every man his own way. Hmm. So he believes that everyone should be allowed to do what it is that they want to do. So far, you know, of course, they will groom you 
in the way that they believe is right, the way that they should. But then, when they now believe that you are up to age, you can now decide Choose. and say, this is the one I want to do, this is what I believe in, this is what I want to do. So, you know, yeah, I was born into a Muslim family, but I, well, the beautiful thing also is that I did practice Islam, I did practice Christianity. Um, I strongly believe in God, I pray to God every day, but now I do not practice either of the religions you know <laughs> and i know if my mom is watching this right now or anytime she watches this it's another fight you know i remember when you followed me to church and my pastor saw zebo and my pastor said i zebo are you are you a christian or a, he said let's just start going <laughs> exactly <laughs> my pastor, my pastor said, which one is let's just thank God? Is it, are you this or okay, Let's thank God. <laughs> you uh, know, and yeah, you uh, like I said, I, I, I do strongly believe in God, um, and I do uh, maintain that I maintain a relationship with God. I I, I believe that I'm convinced because I, I do see His hands. I, I I I pray, and I see Him walk through me. You know, so but it's just that. Um, practicing the religions as it were when I did try tried a lot you know <laughs> um, I, I wasn't just looking for what, uh, what I was looking for I wasn't I didn't find what I was looking for yes yeah, sorry okay. well, I was I, I, there's something central that I believe uh, about these religions or your way of life I strongly believe that I'm a believer of love mm-hmm. so I strongly believe that if you can just treat everyone, every human being, no matter how rich or how poor, no matter how highly or lowly placed. If you can just treat every human being with decency and respect, with a touch of human dignity, you are good to go. When I wake up every morning, I pray to God and I tell God that anything that I'm going to do that is going to ruin the life of another person, I don't want to do it. Mm. And that's, that's good for me. That's, that's, that's the, religion. That's, yeah. Yes, that's, that's my religion. A religion of love and peace, you know, knowing fully well that oh, ni oh, ni oko she, belu ibanuje elu me, you know, I'm at peace with myself that way. So, um, I mean, and that's that's it. That's where I'm at now. But of course, growing up, I did go through all I was of. Coming to you, so we're going to go into your growing up properly. Yes. But would you say that that's enough? For me, that's enough. That's enough. Yes, and um, I stand. I, I don't stand to be corrected. Is at least now. <laughs> I don't stand to be corrected. At least now, I'm an adult. I know my left from my right, and I know what is right and what is wrong. Mm. So it is for me. It is enough. I'm not forcing any other person to tow my path, mm-hmm. and I don't want any other person to force me to tow their own path that's right. to every man his own way. So whatever, and of course. Um, I know a lot of Christians that my friends are doing very well. I know a lot of Muslims that my friends are doing well. A lot of traditional worshippers, Shongo, you know, everyone, everybody to move to feel we will walk from. What is religion? Religion is a way of life. Mm-hmm. So if you believe that this microphone that you are talking to, if you pray to it, if you believe that it will answer you, that's your religion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because even you, you you find that there are a lot of successful people that are in this region or the other. There are a lot of successful people that don't even have any religion. religion. There are a lot of successful people that don't even believe in the existence of God. You know, so at the end of the day, whatever that, whatever you are convinced to do within yourself, by yourself, I believe is your religion. Hmm. And so far you are faithful to it, you are true to it. Why not? Okay, so I'll, I'll come back to slightly about the religion <laughs> and family okay. but l- lead us into your growing up properly mm. how was it like for you what was growing up for, what was growing up mm. like for you as a person growing up was was fun i can't say that i suffered <laughs> i don't say that i don't tell lies <laughs> so i mean um it, my work comfortable quite comfortable mm. my dad is not rich yeah but i would say that I, I never lacked for anything mm-hmm. you know my mom would always make sure and that's why i don't i don't play with my parents i don't play with family mm-hmm. because every at least every time i can look i can look back and say every time i needed this thing 
they did it for me. Yeah. Yes. Even when I had caused them so much trouble and so much pain, their love for me was unwavering. It never flinched. It was unflinching, you know. So, I mean, anything. So, growing up was fun. I know that, I think, the, and I was, I don't know if I was, I would say I was sport, but I was naughty. Because, of course, my mother is, is an educationist. Mm -hmm. She owns a school, so she's very tough. You know, but at the same time, I happen to be our last born. <laughs> so, of course, not the last born from my dad, yeah. but the last born from my mom. So, but my mom, so as a last born, I would uh, do anything, but I didn't always get away with it. I remember there was a time my mom had, she had an accident and I did not know. So every time I get back home, the first thing I do is to go jump on my mom and peck her, you mm -hmm. know? So I always give her a peck on the cheek or something like that. And then this particular day, she had, a, she had the accident, I didn't know. But I just knew that as soon as I got into the house, everyone was saying, they bought my phone, my mommy, my phone, my mommy. But I didn't, it was my business. <laughs> I, did, I wasn't even listening. I just ran upstairs straight. I entered, when I entered, she too was doing like this. <laughs> I just jumped on her and I just pecked her. In the process, there was hot tea on, on the bed. It still poured on her body. <laughs> you know, but she just hugged me like that, the way she was, even through the pain, she just hugged me. So it was, there was a lot of love, mm -hmm. you know, from, from family. And my siblings, most especially, and when I say my, when I say my siblings, I mean my siblings from every mother. Mm -hmm. All my father's wives are my mothers, all of them. How many wives? Are uh, three wives. Jesus. <laughs> what is Jesus? <laughs> what is Jesus? <laughs> I'm, go I'm going to donate one more to him. <laughs> In fact, if you tell him that one, he will, he will say, get out of my sight. Mommy, <laughs> I know you will see this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to talk to a very a, a very fantabulous sugar mommy that I know is doing well. And I'll talk to her. So that she and my daddy, my daddy is a sugar daddy. My mom, the okay. potential wife, will my be a sugar, sugar mommy. mommy. So sugar, 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 daddy, sugar, sugar me sugar. Her. Over the shakare. <laughs> <laughs> <Shakari. laughs> of course, I'm just kidding. I mean, my dad is not even in that space right now. Not anymore. You know. So, but yeah, of course. So what I was saying is, all, the, all, all the, all his wives are my mothers. Mm. But most importantly, the relationship with the children is very strong. Ah, all so there's no uh, this one is from another mother. This one, we are all blood siblings, all of us. So he married the three of them. Yes. Married properly. Yes, so yes, so and not that um, together, of course. Yeah, uh, okay. But of course, he married. Oh yes, he did marry them. Wow. Yes, it's the, at least the three that we know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I, we don't. But of course. <laughs> But of course, I trust my dad. I mean, he's my guy now. Now, he can talk to me, can tell me some job. He would have told me. <laughs> so everywhere clear. All good. All good. All good. All good. <laughs> okay, so coming from that kind of a background, yes. with your dad still loving with three wives, mm -hmm. what would you say about polygamy? Hmm. So, like I said, growing up was there was the love. So, like, I, I want to strongly believe that the love of my mother and my siblings, like I said, all the children, we used to go to each other's house, play, do everything. You know, because it wasn't like all the wives were under the same roof. That's right. Each wife had her own house. You understand? So, but that didn't stop the love the children had for us. So, we will go to this one's house, go to this one, play, enjoy ourselves. So, it was all love. Of course, not to say that... Um, um, they didn't have their, the husband and wife did not have their differences and all not, but we did not care because as long as the love between us, a man correct our, you know, mm. so it's not like it's only the child of this one that can, you know, as the children, every, until this, I am, until um, Sister Tokes and Sister Inka, and every, so everybody like that, at the moment, don't dag you. So we accord that respect. Whether that is your mother that born now, you have to respect. So there's hierarchy. 
and when it's time to eat laugh play we all do that together when it's time to talk to ourselves you know heartfelt conversations we, we have it so to be honest I don't know much. For well, you see them, my papa and the in wives. Nothing concerns me with them. Yeah. That's how we managed our the, the relationships. relationships. Nothing. We didn't really bother ourselves. But of course, when it was time to maybe talk to daddy together, collect all of us would go and say, ah, daddy, something like this. Ah, hey, whoa, this thing. If it's to talk to mommy, any of the mommies, ah, mommy, this. So you know that was how we were able to manage it. So for me, polygamy. Right, I would say if you believe that you can handle it, mm. you know, is is they'll tell you that oh, uh, male, male alone, we and then they'll tell you oh, four wives, this that, but that is a setup too because you have to be able to take care of them mm. equally, love them equally. And when you ask yourself, is it really possible? You understand, but of course, some people believe that. Oh, yes, I can do it. I, I, if it's to, if it's house for this one, house for that, one, house for that one. Then if it's to say, I'll go here Monday, go here Tuesday, and I'm doing it like that. So some people try to, you know. But for me, I would just say that if you believe genuinely that you can do it, and your religion permits you, but if you cannot, why put yourself through that stress? Why put the the women and the children through that kind of stress? You know, if you cannot. I think that's my take on, take it. on it. Yeah. How was it like for you growing up in that um, environment where uh, we are Christians, yes. we are Muslims? Yes. Do you understand? <laughs> and you are allowed to choose. Yes. So how was that like for yes. you? So at what point do you think, okay, no, let me let me be a Christian, let me be a yes. Muslim. Okay, I don't even want to be to the do, two. Yes. I, do you understand? What is it like? Do you have more Christians now from yes. the children? Yes. I mean, yes. do you have more Christians? Do you think the impact of the, what was the impact of the mothers yes. in the religion aspect of the children? Okay. So, oh, as far as religion is concerned, I know I was born a Muslim. We were all born Muslims. And there was a time, Amalole Kewu, mm -hmm. then we would pray. In fact, my dad used to do one thing. If you get your prayers correctly and your Kewu and everything, he'll give you honey, you lick honey. So it was like a motivation for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, we're allowing money. Uh, no, no money. Uh, but we really loved it. The honey was like, you can only have that once in a while. And you already know that it's when you get your lessons right. Your, uh, hey, you go I to Le Kewu, you, yeah, and you do it right. So, we always wanted to do it. So I think my mom noticed that my dad was winning the mm -hmm. <laughs> the battle as as far as she Islam, la she be Christianity or whatnot. We just discovered that one day my mom, the our cable teacher, because they would come to the house and teach us and stuff. I just we just discovered that one day my mom chased this man away. In fact, I think it's it resulted in some flogging. I don't know if she, I think she, if I can remember, maybe she flogged him. She flogged her father. <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> flogged her yeah, father. Honestly, it was so, it was so wild and confusing. I, I don't know. I, I can't wow. really remember, but I think it was in that line. I said, I know that. After that day, that particular affair and any other affair did not come to our house. <laughs> So I'm thinking that really happened, and yet a lot of people oh my my bell. <laughs> something around I, that. Okay. So I noticed that after that day, mom now started taking us to church. Wow. Yes. So we started going to church. Of course, I, I think as at that age, you know, you're just doing anything that comes. Really, you don't. Well, I mean, what do you know about the teachings, the doctrines, and and, and philosophies of these religions? You know, you, you might not really under, get the graphs of it. So we were just going and <laughs> um, went to church, different churches actually, if I remember correctly. And I think I did that till I got into university. It's going because yes. Throughout high school also, we're going to church. Sorry. In fact, then, because I went to Babcock um, um, Secondary School, Babcock that University High nice. School, that's what we call it, BUHS. So, of course, seven day, in fact, we now started going to Seven Day Adventist Church, oh. you know, so every Saturday. And I really love that. It was, oh, yeah. If, if there was one time I really enjoyed going to church, it was actually when I went to SDA, you wow. know. Yes, yes. So if you have to choose a church now, you would choose Seven Day Adventist? Yes, actually. Wow. Yes. Okay. I don't know so much about that. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Is um 
So, um, I mean, I'm not saying it's maybe perfect. I don't know if there's anything or any church or anywhere, anybody that is perfect. You know, but there's a lot of... Um, it's solemn. There's is like one big happy family. Wow. Yes, because, you know, it's, it's controlled, contained, not controlled. Mm-hmm. It's contained. And it's like everyone knows everyone and everyone is sharing things, fellowship, go to each other's house. You know, it's like a, a, a community. You know, so yeah, that's why I have the attachment to SDA, mm-hmm. Magodo. Uh, Mago well, that was the one we went to. Mm-hmm. So, but after secondary school, when I now got into into university, my first university, Leeds City University, as one of my friends, we're still very good friends still to date. His name is Redwan, Redwan Shitu. Mm-hmm. Uh, paparazzi, shout out to him. Mm-hmm. He's shout an out artist. To you, yeah, that's a very much. fine boy with sweet voice. <laughs> so you know, but of course, he's single and not searching. If people want to date him, send me a proposal. Okay. <laughs> okay, Papa. <laughs> so, um, he, he used to pray. Muslim, Islam. He, and he used to pray. And then his way of life was worthy of emulation. Wow. Yes. So, he, he, and he never for once told me, Debo, I, I stop praying now, or don't you want to come back to Islam? Because, I mean, we had conversations, told him how my family is structured and all of that. He never for once told me that. But his, his way of life was enough to convince me to go back to start praying. Wow. Yes. And that was what happened. One day I just told him, I said, uh, Papa, because you call you, I call him Papa too. So I said, Papa, I, I want to start praying. I want to start praying together. And that was it. We started praying together. And, and that was my way back to Islam then. Wow. We started praying. And it was, so it was that time, since that time, yes, I, I took Ramadan very seriously that every year I never used to, till now, even though now I no longer practice. Even though, even though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> even though now I no longer practice, I still, I, I it's just something like, every time it's Ramadan, I can't help it. Mm-hmm. I just always want to join that and use that as a medium to, you know, mm-hmm you know, communicate more. So, yeah, that was it. And I know I did that for uh, uh, Practice Islam, Lee City, Udegbe. When I went to Kotonu, I was still doing it. I think it was when I um, left Udegbe, North American University in Kotonu, and I came back to Lagos. I said, nah, I'm not, I'm not doing it again. In fact, I made a lot of decisions that year and that time. I said I was no longer going to school. I didn't want to go to school again. I didn't want to practice any religion again. I didn't I didn't just want to do anything again. I just wanted to start performing. I just wanted to start acting, mm-hmm. which is all I've always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. You know, so I just said any other thing aside that I'm not doing again. Mm-hmm. And that was the that was the cut for me. Although I later went back to school. But yeah, that was Okay, the so I was coming back to school now. So we talked about religion. So let's go back to school now. Yes. So how what exactly happened? <laughs> did you end up in so many universities in four uh, universities in four universities <laughs> only you people so i i really because i know um or a lot of people we have an idea yes. but we don't really know what happened yes. so what led you into going to different universities mm. then what led you into the issue that you had with um, was it Redeemers University. universities? So yes. let's start with the different universities. First. Okay, okay. So first university was Leeds City University, okay. fresh out of secondary school, Babcock University High School, mm-hmm. um, 2009. Same 2009, I got into Leeds City University. <laughs> so brilliant Ed boy. <laughs> yes, of course. Brilliant I finished as Ed, Ed boy, boy in Babcock <laughs> University High School. Yes, and I was also parade commandant <laughs> in the Adventist Youth Ministry. You see? AYM, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so I got into Leeds City University. I was studying law. Wow. Then, yes. Lawyer, law, I did. <laughs> I think we were in 200 level when NUC just issued a secular then, you know. It was in the press, newspapers, TV stations that our law in, in Leeds City University was not accredited. And that anyone that was doing doing studying law in, in Leeds City University was studying law at their own risk. They were doing so at their own risk. And we had never heard anything like that from the school. So we were shocked that if we're going to be hearing this type of news, why are we hearing it from NUC? 
and just on the papers and just like that. Why is the school not saying anything? So, and of course then, you know, lost the society, of course, we are the president and all of that. So we started asking questions. We, want to, we wanted to have a sit down with the university management, what's going on and, you know, it was dull in things where I said, Omo, we have to carry placard and we have to march down to the um, vice chancellor's um, office, you know, because law faculty was quite different from the main this okay. thing. Well, I was like back. So we march, march down to the um, management building and ask what's going on, you know. So, of course, that, and that was how we started. So every day, in fact, we, we no longer used to resume at faculty of law again. No. We just go straight because they were not, nothing was happening. They were not answering us. So in fact, I know it got to a time we didn't let other students receive lectures too. We said oh. injustice to one is injustice, injustice to all. To so if law students are not receiving lectures, no other department should be receiving lectures. You know, so we shall, we started until school now agreed to meet with our parents and then our parents came. It was still, I remember the PT, the, not only PT, I mean the parents uh, consult, get one forum, shall we then call them? So, you know, parents came, were not satisfied, and then we continued. And now they now started locking us out of the school. So everything we used to do used to be in front of the gates. They won't allow law students to come inside the school. In fact, they, I remember, I think they got policemen or bouncers or people to man the gate and everything. So, you know, it got quite tense. They also kind of recognized that I was one of those, you know, in, involved in the movement. <laughs> You know, so it was, I know, I try to know that the way that thing ended was one of the days we were, we were now in school, just saying no class, nobody's doing lectures, you know, it was very, so it was getting really serious. Mm. I try to know the next person I see is my mom in school. She never told me, she never mentioned, I don't know how, who called her, maybe, managed, I don't know how. But she was in school and then she saw me because she saw me yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she said, I was like, Debo. So I told her I'm like, Mommy. Mommy. <laughs> like, what, what are you doing here? She said, yeah, come here. Oh yeah. Jamalo, jamalo. She took me away out of Little University and I never got um, went back. She, they didn't let me go back to Little University. Okay, so that was from your parents. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, pretty much because of the... But there was always the option of um, um, transferring to another department. Mm -hmm. in, yeah, it was one of the options the, the school gave that for till the issue was resolved, you can transfer to um, another department. Mm -hmm. You understand? Continue. Yes, but we didn't take that option. So at least I know that myself, read one, not my friend I was telling oh. you about, a yeah, number of us just went to um, Udigbe North American University. From that? From there. So Go what happened there? So in Udigbe North American University, I can never forget this one. Um, there, there were two, so everything was going good, although there was, um, who are these newbies, you know, because we were coming from Leeds City University, but you we... You went together? Yes, not I all of us, okay. but at least in my class few of us, wow. and then we now used to work together, and they used to see us, so they were always just like, ah, killing Sean Willie, because they felt we were forming, or things like that. <clears throat> so, there, there's this course, um, sociology, that I'd already done in Leeds City University, and I aced, you know, I mean, me, because I don't want anybody holding anything against me, I always try to do my job, 100%, mm. and that goes for my academics too, I take them very seriously, mm. not for anything, but just because I wanted to have bragging rights, mm. <laughs> you know, so, that course, sociology, in Udegbe, there were now two lecturers taking the course, Mr. Raji and Mr. Kodri, now, Mr. Kodri was the one taking my group, they divided us into groups, mm. Mr. Kodri, very easygoing lecturer, very calm. He plays with students and all of that. Mr. Raji, on the other hand, was, you know, those strict lecturers and everything that I always wanted to say they would show you Pepe and Professor everything. Had life. Professor had life. <laughs> 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 so, we're exam periods, um, one day, we just finished exam for sociology. And then Mr. Kodri, which is our own guy, you know, we saw him outside the hall. I said, ah, so we just finished the exam. We were very interesting. Then we saw him holding a BlackBerry phone. That was when BlackBerry was really popping and all of that. So he said, ah, Mr. Kodri, when did you buy BlackBerry that you didn't tell us? Give 
what's your pain now? That kind of thing. Like, we're just yes. playing with him and everything. Mr. Raji, from nowhere, comes to where we're just in and say, why are you to be telling your lecturer to give you Blackberry pin? Why are you so disrespectful? What's that? So, I knew he was talking to me because he faced me directly. But because, you know, I can be very dramatic. And when I want to cause trouble, mm. I know how to cause trouble. Mm. So, he was looking at me, he was saying that. And when, if you know, I let him finish, and I looked at him like, oh, who is he talking to? Like, I mean, it can't be me. <laughs> so, he was very angry. That really mm. triggered him. So, he looked, he said, I'm, I'm talking to you. Is it me? I'm talking to you. I said, sir, nobody was talking to you here. You see, well, Mr. Cordy, that we're talking to you, just came from nowhere. We we're not talking to you. You know, so, of course, Mr. Cordy, because he's a fellow lecturer, and so he was trying to tell me to calm down and everything, but I, mean, I was already in my zones, you know. And um, Read One already knew, like, ah, oh, voila, Read One and Toby, those are my guys that were with me then. Uh, ah, while well, like, again, they were, you know, because even in this city, I always had this thing with lecturers and everything, you know. Then it was just me fighting for what I thought was right. I didn't want anybody to bully me or all of the things. When I look back at those times, I, I could still have done that, but I know better that I could have done it in a better, in a better way, way, you know. So I, I just, I'm like, sir, we're not talking to you. And I said, I'm going to teach you a lesson today. The next thing, which was very wrong of him to do, he came and then he jacked my shirt. And as a, as law students in Udigbe, North American University, you always wear white and this and black, and then your time must always be even. If all students had we had col, um, color codes in Udigbe, North American University. Wow. We wear H NAB, that's what we call it. You wear, I think H I R S. I mean, this is blue and red. Shall color like say, like secondary school, different departments with different color codes. So he was choking me, and I said, sir, you can't do that. And I'm going to count to five for you to remove your hand from my, this thing. If you don't remove it, I'll have to punch you. <laughs> That's why I said we could have done things better. <laughs> so, of course, it, that, that was, it, it wouldn't, at least for pride, because students were now already coming, and they were watching what was going to happen. So, of course, I counted to five. We didn't remove it, and, uh, you know. We we made <laughs> we we hugged ourselves. <laughs> I hugged our quickly. Just like that. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> and that was it. That was it. You know, of course, like I said, these were things that you would do in your younger days. And mm. I mean, I was. I don't think I was even twenty uh, at that time. I don't think I was twenty. Yes. Yeah. So, of course. The owner, was it the owner of the school show or the vice chancellor? She called me. Like, oh, since the, the school, this thing, this something like this has never happened before. You know, you didn't even, and I said, sir, you are not even asking me what happened. what happened. He attacked me first. I said, mm, you are still talking. That's what we are saying. So what I have a problem is they don't, oh, in these universities, they don't always want you to talk. They believe that you should, and that's not the focus of that's not what a university should be like. We should be able to ask questions. Like I said, we can do it better. We can be more polite about it. We can take better decisions. But you cannot say that a university student cannot ask questions. You are not there to to conform. Well, let me, let me not say conform, but you are not there to just follow everything like like they are telling you go like this. Well, you have to ask why like this. Is it because everyone always has to go like this? Or because you don't know that you can actually go like this and later in front, you all of you will now meet at that place. Like different people can... So you have to ask questions. Mm. So if you prove to me that this is the only way mm. because in that place there are dangerous snakes and then there's this and that. You prove to me, you let me know that, oh, okay. But just because of that road, we don't really know what... So we, university students must be able to ask questions so that when they get out, they, they can use their head, they can use their brains. So of course, that was what happened in... The man, so the mistake I made was they didn't expel me outrightly okay. because my friends now told me that my results still came out, it was still um, published. But that day, the man just said, Get out of my school! Like, it, ju it didn't, it, I just felt that meant I should just leave, mm -hmm. you know. So, just get out, get out, I don't want to ever see you, you know. But I didn't face the panel, they didn't send me a letter of expulsion and everything. So, I, in the heat of that, I just called my mom that. I, I should get out of their school. <laughs> <laughs> and it was still my mom that came all the way again to Kutonu. Say, uh, okay, oh yeah, Jamalo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. So, 
Second, that was it. Second university. That second university. The third one. Afebabala University. Okay, Afebabala. Adoe Kisi. Now, nothing happened there other than um, when I applied. I, so, you know, I now said when, when, I went, when we went back home, and I told my mom that I'm not going to school again. Hmm. I said I'm tired. Because even the law, is, I did law. I knew I've always wanted to be a performer. I've always wanted to be an actor. I've been mimicking Chris Oyaki Lome and my teacher since I was... A very, very small boy. Because I would just notice that we watch anything we watch on TV, I would just start doing it. So, but of course, after secondary school, you know, in fact, like my SS theory, I was already thinking, okay, should be I already know how to act because I was in drama school, even in Bapok University High School. Mm. You know, so I was in drama. So I said, if I want to go to university, why don't I just do something different? Maybe law. You know, because I also uh. like talking and speaking up for people and ah, so let me just do law and have that, but I will go back to my acting, which I've always loved doing. Mm -hmm. So I had to tell them that, look, I think it's this law, because I've been, you know, studying law and knowing it, mm -hmm. you kind of just feel like, oh, you know everything, like, like you can challenge you everyone. And you can, yeah. Oh. So I said, look, I'm not doing it again. I just want to go to acting and do what I've always wanted to do. So my mom said, no, you have to finish school. But of course, you know, she spoke to my dad. He said, look, you can go to an acting school but you have to go back to school. Even if it's that that you want to go and do in that school, yes. you have to finish school, you know. So that period, I went to Pefty. That was when mm. I went to Pefty. I did um, a three-month course acting. It was, and you know, just adding experience, and it was very good for me, you know. Then, and out, when I finished that, now I said, okay, so do you still want to do your law, or now you want to do theater in school, since you already also have Otishi law, ni Otishi theater, no. So Pico. I said, I want to do theater. Let me just have theater certificate then. So that was why we applied for uh, Afebola University. Because in, in all of this, my parents never wanted me to go to a federal university, or they just felt that it was on Shebani private university. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> they never so they and it was like uh, federal university. They don't want my right here. They will just do this, do that. So I said, okay, we now look for private universities that are theater at. Okay. And out of I think about three or four. They said I should do Afebola University. Now I got admission. The exam, everything was done in Unilag. They mm -hmm. have an office there, oh, like okay. a center. Afebola. So I did that. They gave me admission for theater arts Afebola University. Getting to the school in Adwekiti, we were done registration, all of that. The dean, yes, I think of student affairs or academic something, something calls me to the office and says, okay, well, my boy, you know, it's a pretty new school. We are still doing this, doing that. So we don't really have theater arts for now. <laughs> ah. So, <laughs> so there's English, there's mass communication, there's uh, mid, no, media, they call it media and uh, media and something and communication okay. studies. I can't remember. So there's this, there's that, you know, it's also like theater. And I looked at him. <laughs> <laughs> and I know him, you know. I he was at Babcock University before. Oh, okay. When I was in Babcock, Babcock Secondary School, school. So we always hear about him. Oh, okay. So I said, <laughs> <laughs> It's not like I don't know his name. Yeah. I remember his name. Yeah. It was no. Let me see. Mm -hmm. So I said, sir, <laughs> do I look like I don't know what I want? Mm -hmm. This is going to be my third university. And I'm only doing this because I only have the opportunity to do this because my parents have given me this opportunity. They've not given up on me, despite my many failures. Mm. I know what I want. I want to study theater arts. I want to. I want to be a thespian. I, that's, I want to have the degree. So why why are you telling me to come and do English? And this is the third university, you know. As I know you, you were so 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 when I was in Babcock Secondary School, Babcock University High School. And this is not the values. This is not what you taught us. So you cannot tell me you have this and then I get here and you do not have it. I said, oh, no, my boy. This <laughs> I didn't want to cause a scene. It was, I just called my parents. I said, look, this is what's happening. This is not my fault. I'm not a problem yeah. child. <laughs> this is just keep happening. You know. Wow. So my dad now said, okay, look, finish the first year. Go, do English or media or whatnot. Finish the first year. When you, after this first academic year, you will find you another private university that has theater arts, and you just transfer. Wow. So I said, okay, but I'll come to Kurumbe. 
So I would leave school, come to Lagos, attend audition, start looking for a role in Hollywood. You know, it was, I, I didn't just stay in school. So that was it with, after the academic year, it was now time. So it was now time to um, find another school okay. that had theater. And then we now found Redeemers University. Mm. So my dad now said, okay, get your transcript so that they can take you into 200 level instead of starting... I told my dad that, no, let me just start from, because mm. Mama in resort in the affair. <laughs> yes. So, you know, I'm, I'm sharing all of this, um, and just so that young, I'm still a young man anyways, mm. but people like you're in your, your 16, 17, 18, early 20s, university stage and everything, is not too early to start making the right decisions. Mm. Don't think you have all... The, all the years and all the days to play around, mm. you can start getting it right, That's right. by con consciously making efforts to do the right things, right. you know, because I could have done better. Mm. I thank God for where I am, but I know if I, I could have taken better decisions that would have shaped me into, you know, early, uh, early on, yeah. you know, that would have helped me early on. So, and I told my dad that, look, I just want to start from the beginning. And then my dad now told my mom that she should go and talk to me that, is the neighbor that he knows. We will not see an opportunity to start school in, from 200 level and then he will say he wants to start 100 level. Boy, you know, Shazam, hello, hello. <laughs> so my mom, and that was, in all of this, that was the first mm. time I cried. Mm. I cried so much that day. Because my mom now came to me and then she asked that, and I had to confess that. Because mm. I'm because a commune simple, I didn't write exams and this and that. And I started crying and I started to apologize that I know I've put out through so much stress and pain mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and I'm sorry that, you know, I didn't mean that, this, that, this. And then she, she said I should stop crying. She took me to my dad. She explained everything to him. And that said, oh, it's fine. That in all these things, with the at least the two universities before now, it wasn't like they expelled me because I was cheating in the exam or they caught mm. me doing something. Or it was always because I felt the need to maybe speak up against this or against that. But that this is going to be the fourth university, <sighs> and that he has tried. Mm. So that even though if anything happens in the university, they won't touch me. They have never beaten me before. I think only once. Or Yes, only my mom beat me just once. My dad beat me just once. I remember the two incidents. Uh, that's for another time. <laughs> so, but they would, they said they would never do, they wouldn't disown me or anything, but they would just say, okay, maybe school is not my calling. Calling. And I should just go and be doing whatever I do. Kill a machine, go to my womb. So, but yeah, because it's not, it's, it's, it's cool, but I work. I shouldn't force it. So that I should just try my best to do this with the Mass University, do the four years theater. And again, it's something that is what I really love so that there should be no problem. And actually, I got to the Mass University and there was no problem. It was going good. I mean, we were blessed with the greatest of, of lecturers, um, Professor Kola you were, in mm. fact, taught us in 100 level. We, we, we are blend immediately. Mm. Professor Ahmed Erima, my father, we still talk to now as mm. my teacher, in whom I'm very mm. pleased. I'm proud to be mm. called a student. Mm. You know, so, uh, everything was going smooth, and of course, but me being me, I already, I already had one or two confrontations here and there, mm. but everything was going smooth. In 300 level, I became the social director of the Students' Association. In 400 level, I became the president of the Students' Association. And that came with a lot of respect. As a matter of fact, before then, a theater student had never been president of the Students' Association before. Oh, okay. But then I ran for office on a post. Mm. You know, because all, everyone that wanted it just said, look, they both should do it. Mm. They just kind of felt like, I, I would do it. And I, I did try my best. You know, we started, we got, I, I, there was a mandate on ground. You know, the welfare of the students was a priority. And to make sure that every student was proud to call the university their own. Mm. That was what I always, I always told the students then. Mm. This school is your own. But, and I always tell the school management then that before the students can start talking great about the university, they must be happy. 
and then you don't need billboard um um adverts television adverts in the university number one market of a university is the student. students students so once right. the student is happy he's telling all his friends that's right all the junior brothers that are still in secondary school you better come to my school that's yeah cool. that they're the number one marketers so mm -hmm. i always tell them like the school the students must be happy mm -hmm. so i mean everything went good to of course that for the levels president it got very hot i was always at one war the uh, battle or the other with the university management i want this i want and because of course I had the backing of the students. Mm. If I say this is how we are going, That's everybody cool. moves that way because they know that I have their best interests at heart, you know. So, throughout my stay in school, it was very hard to do anything to mm. me. I say, okay, I'm a boy, you must be out or anything, you know. Nah, because to the glory of God, it, and I was, it was just like the administration was just like this. Mm. As a matter of fact, they, there was an external audit. To account for our accounts mm. of my time as president, and when they finished the audits externally, they discovered that it was the school that was owing hey. the administration money. Because what I did was, when we started, when the administration got in, I made the all the executives contribute money. I've forgotten the amount. Everyone contributed money to start to kickstart the administration, wow. which had never happened before. So for the first time. There was no need to force students to pay the association dues mm. because, as you are resuming, Bogotada, Atifiche, Jota, Pen, mm. you know, like a park, nice park. You know, once you're paying, you get, you, you're getting mm. that. So all the students were, ah, what, what do you mean, Ronsa? You know, that's what we call it, the University Association, Ronsa. Ronsa, they give something, once you pay your dues like this, they don't give you that. And we the money to do all of that, we never took it back. It was just, it was in, 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 in fact, we left money. So, you know, it, it was all like that. They could not really do anything. Mm. But then, when I now finished, I was waiting for convocation. I had defended my project. I had written my final exams. I was awaiting convocation. And then, we went to... My dad has um, is a journalist. Mm. So, I went with his crew members to interview Professor Wandi Abimbola. Okay. Former vice chancellor of Abafemi Awolo oh, University. He's a, he's a national state man. So, and we were, we had this great talk and everything. And then I shared a post on my Facebook. And, you know, of course I knew what I was doing. You know, I shared the, the post and kind of, I didn't call any names, but the way I, I framed it, the way I put that thing together, it was like, it kind of felt as uh, like an insult. And to, the ma to the management of um, um, the school, school. which I never admitted and which I still don't admit. <laughs> but, you know, it just it just felt like it was directed at them. Because somewhere in the write-up, I put that if the shoe fits in, you wear it. You know, but I never mentioned any names. And I went to four universities. I could have been talking about any, any university. So why does, why did members in, some members in the management, as I then feel that the message was directed at that, at, at that university. And that was, in all my years, and out of everything I did, that piece was what got me expelled from the university. I was, you had finished. I had finished. I was just waiting for convocation. So they sent me a letter of, um, they, they made me face a panel. They called me, you know, that I should come and face a panel. And then, when they invited me to, they didn't invite me to the panel formally. They just, um, the student affairs officer just sent me a text and said they, um, they want me to come and have a meeting with some members of the, of the management in the university. And I asked them, I said, are you inviting me to face a panel? Or are you asking me for a friendly invitation? I need to know, it's important. And why I needed to know is, I already as suspected that this was going to lead to my expulsion. And I already knew that if you do not invite a student formally and you do not have it on record, that you're inviting him formally to face a panel, whatever decision that you generate out of that meeting is null and void because the student is not aware that he's facing he's a disciplinary a committee panel. panel. Yeah. Wow. So I, he said no, it was just a meeting. So, of course, I already munched that. I was already saving all of those things because I knew where it would go in the, in the long run. So I faced the, the panel and this, and I said, you look, you guys should cut this. I know where this is going to. You're asking me if that post is related to you guys. I will say no. No. 
Your name is not there. The name of any member of the school is not there. Why do you feel it is directed to you? Eh, you know, some parents called, they said, uh, they saw the president post this one. Are you having issues with I said, all of the good. Because, you know, then too, I would have my executives who go to ICM, go to different places and share flyers of the university. My, my Instagram page, Facebook then was like, it was all about the university. university. I was just marketing university, doing this. I said, all of those posts, the school never called me once that mm -hmm. we see what you're doing online for the university. We see your, how you're pushing the image of the university. I mean, we'll go to, I will go to Abuja, go to different places in the name of the university. Give out jotters, you know, with money that we had contributed. So that one post where your name was not mentioned, is what you call me, is what you're telling me to come here to face a panel for. And you're telling me you feel attacked by something I didn't mention your name. So I said, okay, no problem. So after a week from that panel, they sent me a letter of expulsion. And I've already I've been telling my dad already, you know. Because, of course, when I was going to be president, he said, ah, Debo, you know how you are, you know this, you know, it could lead to confrontations and all of that. I said, no, I'll be very careful. I mean... Once the school understands that we as students are just and as student leaders, we just want things to be better, they will give us breathing space. Mm. So immediately, a letter of expulsion came in. <clears throat> I went to my dad and my mom. You know, I showed them, and my dad asked me, "What do you want to do?" I said, first, I want to make noise on social media. I want the world to know what's happening to me. Mm -hmm. And second, I want us to go to court. Good. I want I want to fight this. You can't, there's no m justification whatsoever to be expelled over this. At least I know a bit of law. Your name is in there. The name of any official is in there. It, you can't prove this. Wow. You can't say this is why you are out of everything. <laughs> you could have expelled me for. Of course, there was nothing because I didn't do anything to be. So they, they were just looking for something, and then you found that. So my dad said, "Oh, well, well I'm good." So first put it on, on, on um, social media. I mean, I remember as I then, I'd not even gotten. This was 2017, yeah, 18. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, I can't remember. I think 17, 18, there about. And I know a lot of, I, because I'd not even started bearing, mac, well, I'd been bearing macaroni, but people didn't know me. No, yeah. Only maybe industry people that you see me on set and all of that. But I know that a lot of entertainers, even that the Banky W, a lot of everyone, a lot of people just picked up that story. It was on social media. And people were just upset that, are you saying that this thing that this guy wrote is why you are expelling him, your president, is why you are expelling him, and then there's more to it. And people just are asking questions. You know, and then we also started the court process. And, you know, before you know it, I think orders from above, and I think people just said, look, make sure, just, what's all this? I don't want this issue up and down. You guys find a way to sort it. And then, of course, the school called, how do we settle this? This, that, da, da, da. And, you know, we, put, we said, my lawyers, of course, they say, oh, money damages. I say, I beg, just give me my certificate. Okay. Let me graduate. That's all I want. I don't need money and, uh, you know, all of that. So we, we settled out of court. They called me for my graduation. I graduated. I got my finally. certificate. Finally. What year did you graduate finally? I think that was um, 2018. <gasps> I think it was 2018 or 2019. I think 2018. How many years altogether? I think nine, 10 years. 9, 10 years. So is it that 2018 or 19? I'll check. I finally got the certificate. <laughs> So, so nine, ten years. Ten years for, d for different my, universities. Yes. For the degree. For my <laughs> BA. B finally, <laughs> you are a graduate. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yes. interesting story. So let let me quickly move to another question, so I can allow you to go. At what point did you decide to go into skit making? You know, you had always been an actor. I've yes. known you. People. Yes. So, at what point? What led you into that? That was that was 2019. Okay. And it was yes, I remember it was after the school struggle. Hmm. Yes, I think it's actually no. I think I got the certificate late 2018. 18. And early 2019, I was depressed. Hmm. You know, I mean, I think the fights and all of that distracted me. Hmm. I made me forget that. Oh, but you don't finish school, oh, mm. and you're in the real world now, right? So, but of course, I was already going for auditions and appearing on movie sets and all of that. But 
I it, it felt like I, I wasn't where I wanted to be. Mm. You know, I, I just knew that I was cut out for more. Mm. I've always said, you know, and this has been since secondary school, I've always knew, I've always known that I'll be successful mm. by the grace of God. Mm. I just, is some is how I've carried myself, even since secondary school. And I was a Debo, Omar Shuri, there's no stopping you. Mm. I just didn't know the time. Mm-hmm. But I was, I was very, I, I always said I would be patient no matter what. But you see that 2019, because of all the fights I've gone through, all my, all the life struggle with university and all of that, then I'll still go for audition and then they will make you feel like you don't know what you're doing as an actor. I am a thespian. I studied theater. I was trained by the best of the best. Mm. What do you mean that I'm not an actor? What do you mean I'm not a performer? What do you mean that I cannot do this or do that? I, w- I would always win best actor in school, in the, at the, in the midst of thespians, fellow thespians, you know, and a gathering of thespians, they are saying, uh, this, is, this one is Sabi. Mm. If my t- fellow thespians can say I Sabi, I don't care about any other person telling me I don't Sabi. Mm. So... It was then I started to question the auditioning and casting system in the industry. And I was like, what's, what's going on? So I, I said, no, I refuse to let these people decide whether I can perform or not, whether mm-hmm. I can act or not. Mm-hmm. I have to prove that, yes, I will show you that I have this talent. God has blessed me with the talent now. Mm-hmm. So because they would not want to start making me feel like, oh, no, oh, that told me. No, and that, that wasn't true. It's, it's not true. Mm. You know, so I, content creation, I started looking at it, you know, the skit making mm. and things. I never liked it. Mm. You know, yeah. When I used to, because in school days, we used to see all them Baba in the games and all of them, Chris Clown, you know, Benny Adon, Maraji. I think Brother Shaggy also started, I think maybe it was 20s. 17 or 18, I can't remember what you said. But you know, we used to see all of them. And I just used to be like, I'm really in she. I just felt that was in theater. I just felt, mm. I felt some type of way about it. So I, I didn't think I was ever going to do it. I'm sure God was looking at me like, you mm. know. Mm. You know. So when the industry was frustrating me, I said, look, Odanko in Godan, Razagin, she would have make sense. Odanko in funny. Only mini, only mini, only mini. So I said, look, let me give this content creation world a chance. Yes. Just see it as an avenue. Just see it as you acting, yeah, as you performing. And so. just do it. If, it. It takes nothing away from you. It was okay. what I told myself. Nobody know you now, so it will be deforming. You know, so it takes nothing. But then, what I, was, what I just used to think, what would Yerima say? Professor so Ahmed Yerima is my mm-hmm. teacher mm-hmm. in school. You know, so, and he taught us all about theater and everything. So, there's a certain standard. Mm. You know, so I just used to look like, ah, Tiba Berek, you kill him or gam in school, man, so bad. You know, what I like to say. Wait, what do you go to cinema blockbuster? Come on, you're my real, go match. I said, well, this is my life. Mm. I will do it. Let me see. So, I just started, I started trying out different roles. Mm. You know, because I didn't even start as Daddy Y in my mm. content mm. or Professor Hard Life. Mm. Just doing different things. But I noticed that the first time I tried that daddy wa persona, mm. there was something different about it. Mm. I saw that my friends engaged with the post. I mean, before, they would just like it and everything. But this time, they actually shared that, that very first daddy wa content. Mm. It was with Mosu and I think Mona Lisa. I can't remember. But I remember that very first daddy wa content. They shared it to the group. We have a group. And they said, ah, they were... But um, this idea makes sense. So how you do? Uh, mm. So I asked. Her, I said, I would not say. I said, you funny that I like him. I said, but now they like the other ones. Soon I said, no, we just they support you. Those ones now rubbish you they do. <laughs> <laughs> we just they give you support. But this one, ah, it makes sense. That was how I started to create content intentionally around, around. that persona. Yeah. Mm. In fact, of course, I know it's just the hand of God because it was that same. 2019 mm-hmm. towards it wasn't three four months that i started and everybody ah, macaroni, ah, boy, macaroni. Mm-hmm. i would step out and people would say ah okay. no you they do that man i'm like what just like that i'm like what 
this is all I was looking for in, in the film industry was a chance to show that I can perform. Can do Just put me, give me a space, man. I will perform. You know, but then everybody said, ah, oh, this guy, that guy. I said, okay, hmm. here we are. And then I, I put in more pressure. I started doing, 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 doing. And next thing I know, Tunde Kilani is calling me to wow. come and feature in Aila. Wow. I said, what? Wow. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, we are here. Okay, <laughs> okay. Wow. Yes, so and that's, that's, and I and mean, today to, the story is different. Thank God, yes. Thank God. Thank okay, God. so, um, the, what has the answers period yes. till now, yes. till Nigeria of today? Yes. What has Nigeria, Nigerian, Nigerian, Nigerians, mm -hmm. what? Have they taught you? What have you learned? Hmm. Nigerians and Nigeria hmm. and SARS. <sighs> you know, first things first. And SARS for me, you know, is very, is very emotional for me. I know. You know, it's a very touching part of my life. I know. You know, and of course, that has always been me since secondary school. But of course now this is <laughs> this is on a national scale. Mm -hmm. In fact, when when I finally started when people started to say, ah macaroni, macaroni and when I started to get recognition, mm -hmm. you know, to the glory of God and I came into limelight. My mom, you know, called me. She was so happy, and she was like, ah, you know, we, we were talking. She was just very happy, and everyone at home. So when NSAS started, and next thing they see me out there doing this, doing that, controlling this, ah, yeah, NSAS, NSAS. I'm like, oh, ah, here we go again. again. <laughs> yeah. You know, because everyone that knew me, and you know up to that point mm -hmm. before them mm -hmm. definitely knew that i would be out there because mm -hmm. they just know that ah that is emo mm -hmm. you know so it was it was um a defining moment because then i i got a lot of people that not, that used to love me then did not love me again wow. because of my participation my involvement you know, wow. politicians and their supporters. And, you know, a lot of them that used to really love my God. Ah, I'm like, well, boy. The moment it seemed like this guy is a voice against this or that, it changed. Ah, you mm. know. But of course, in the same, that's the same way it also got me some new admirers. That, oh, wow, I like what this guy stands for. Oh, I like this, I like that. You know, so it's, it's a double-edged sword, right? And then, but for as far as, Nigeria and Nigerians are concerned. I, I I don't like to blame us, but sometimes too I blame us. Nigerians fought really hard mm. during the entire period, and I think how it ended kind of just weakened everybody again. Like ah, but that's that's why I say that I also blame us because. What I've noticed, I've learned about Nigerians is that we think it's a blessing, but it's a curse. This survival mentality. The average Nigerian is a survivor. Hmm. It's in our system. We will always find a way to make it work. Hmm. Hmm. You way you never chop. Way we say how you eat. One somehow. We are <laughs> so we are the man saw at the man saw and we always say, ah, I'm on Nigeria. I mean, ah, ah, I'm a, I'm a go survive, we go survive. If you will survive for Nigeria, you will survive anywhere. It's not a it's not something to be proud of. It's a mm. curse. Because that way, anything that comes our way will be accepted and move on. So, ti owe po yen, to ba tu dan stu un sin, bo che wa ye, ama mo fo. Ti, em, do do la wo, ko ba, bo che wa ye, anything to un shele, ko was, we will move on. Because, by instinct, by default, we just want to survive. Mm. 
Mm. So we never know when it is enough. To, so I oh, now I always ask Nigerians, when will we stop surviving? When will we start living? Mm. What's the average lifespan of a Nigerian? Nigerian. Stress, boo, ba, ba. And we are just comfortable with it because we believe that are also here. Survive. You know. So when do Nigerians want to start operating on a level playground? Where every Nigerian is equipped to be able to succeed. Obudo she 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 now, but keep everything plain. Everybody they operate, you know, because the average Nigerian that is born is already behind. Mm. Is far behind. The powers that be are far ahead. So it is very hard to catch up, and that is why we have a system of corruption. Because to thrive in Nigeria. We, we run a system of corruption. Everything that we do survives on that system of corruption. You want to get your driver's license, your passport, you want to buy fuel, you want to anything you want to do. Corruption loan, loan, jeco stand, loan jeculation, condolation. Whether you are a direct participant or not, we survive on that corruption, on that level of corruption. Mm -hmm. So I just always say that we are still surviving. And I believe that when Nigerians are truly ready, the power is, 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 is at, it's just at our hands, yeah. It's by, it's with us. It's just, we just need to know when we are ready to take it. But do you think, would you say Nigerians didn't try during the last election? Would you say we didn't do enough? Oh, oh we, we, we tried. We tried. We did. Oh, I mean, because I happen to be one of the people that said, you see that energy that we have been bringing from NSAS, we need to convert it into yeah. political participation. Mm. Electing your leaders. Come on. This country is blessed. We have minds, creative minds, intelligent minds. No, I mean, with all humility, we need, we need the best of us to govern us, to lead us. Yeah, we can do better. We can do better than what we have now, than what we are doing now. Every, all of us can do better. So, yes, we tried, but you know you know how you try and it's never just enough. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know how you try and it's never just enough. We need to do more. We need to do... Freedom comes by struggle. It's not given to you on a platter of gold. Mm. There are people that have, that have suffered so much, whether corrupt or they are not corrupt, but what is yeah. Mm. You know, to... Gain that power that they have, and they will not give it to you on a platter of gold. Okay. You will struggle to collect it. So it's not enough to come out one election cycle and you think you should have it all. Oh, oh no! What of these ones that have been struggling since for how many oh, years? Yes. For how many election cycles? So you need to put that into consideration and say, okay, it's a continuous fight. It's a fight till we get it. So yes, they have tried, <laughs> but we have not tried enough. Mm. We have tried, but we have not tried enough. So struggle will continue. And will that continue until you get it. You cannot you cannot match the bricks. Mm. You have to take it. You have to take it. And it's ours for the taking. Mm. We just need to know when we are ready. God is our strength. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's what I always say. That we have left everything in the hands of God. But if we look at the countries that survive more that not survive, rather, if we look at the countries that are most successful in the world, they are not operating on, on the train of religion. Mm -hmm. They are not leaving their things in the heart of God. They have struggled for their future success and prosperity. And they just have a system that works. Mm -hmm. If you look at the um, Singapore, and if you look, look at the struggle, how these people gained freedom. Freedom. Real freedom. We have to see independence. So how you connect your freedom... Okay, we got to. <laughs> so, and God has blessed us. Nigeria is a land flowing with milk mm -hmm. and honey. God has blessed us too much, way more than other countries even have. Mm -hmm. It's a natural disaster. Oh, no. See, oh, no. oh, oh, no. oh, 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 we have the people who are so relaxed. All right, because I want to let you go, I don't want to keep you for <laughs> too long. So I have two more questions, but okay. I'm going to ask together. So and um, so it will be two in one question, right? Okay. So the first one will be, how do you cope with advances from women? 
<laughs> I know a lot of women out there. An average girl likes a Mr. Macaroni. <laughs> Not only because you're successful, you're a good guy. And uh, yes, and uh, <laughs> um, a lot of women also, we kind of like the activism <laughs> in you. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So, so yeah. how do you cope with that? And then the second question will be, when is Adebo Ali getting married? <laughs> You know, well, I, I should have seen that coming. <laughs> I know <laughs> because you are my mom's friend. I know, <laughs> so I'm sure she has uh, uh, me, uh, me, bum uh, uh, sorrow. Uh, <laughs> right now, okay. you know, um, last year, late last year, mm -hmm. just some months ago, mm -hmm. I did something, you know, for Momsi, and she sent me a message. She was so happy, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of prayers, and then she said, Ah, where did Bo call me? Oh, just one thing. Look, what you need for me, and I'm on my way. Ah, I want to see you. What's that one thing? Bami, why are you? But you know, so I I get it, and I mean, your loved ones will always ah, uh, what's happening in your life, and I mean, and I'm sorry again, mommy, because he doesn't like to hear me say this. You know, I'm I'm not just ready. I'm not just ready. On our behalf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just ready. I'm not thinking about it right now. Okay. I'm not thinking about it right now. And yes, my friends, my siblings, everyone say, ah, okay, time more, time more. I mean, maybe because in my head, there's time. Although I know that it's good to do it very early mm -hmm. and everything. But the thing is, I don't want to say more, but what I can say is, I'm not just thinking Think about, about it, now. it now. And I don't like to hurt people. Mm. you know I'm not perfect and I've made some mistakes in my life and I've done you know some things that I didn't mean to hurt these people but maybe once or twice I'm talking about all these emotional mm. things now you know but I don't I don't I don't like to be put in that situation where I hurt someone and it's why I feel it's just better to over just stay your lane mm. Don't go and hurt anybody. The same way I don't want anybody to hurt me. Okay. I'm, I'm You're someone too that, fragile yes, to be hurt. You know, and uh, you know everyone says, "Oh, ah, nah, I, I'm, I'm not a hard guy." Just, <laughs> I don't just want to be hurt. I you know, because I, I understand and I have the idea of what love and what commitment it should be. be. You know, so if I can't get that, and you know, right now I just want to keep it cool, mm. and of course. Advances from women, eh? Hmm. Let's just thank God. Kasha You know, but one thing is, I, 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 I respect women a lot. Mm. I love women a lot. I respect them. So, best believe that I'm not one to take advantage. I'm not one to, and like I said, I would not just want to do anything to hurt you. Mm -hmm. So, I, I take it easy. Again, I'm not a saint, mm -hmm. and I'm not perfect. Yeah. Why well, take it easy? I go easy. <laughs> easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so lastly, yeah. what has life taught you? Hmm. Mm. What has life taught me? A number of things. But if there's anything life has taught me is that it's never too early or too late to start. Start. Mm. So, you know, people always say it's not too late. But it's never too early. Because you will think about, you are in secondary school right now, or you're in the university, and you're thinking, ah, after school now, mm -hmm. after school now. No. There are a lot of successful people that started from school. That's right. A lot of successful people that started immediately, they finished from school, or dropped out from school, self, touched by the school, mm -hmm. and they decided to do something. Yeah. And today in the world, there are, there, are, yeah. there are people you study in school. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. Yeah. You know, so it's never too early or too late to so, start. Yeah. And you have nothing to lose. Mm. Sometimes, of course, it comes with things to lose. Mm. But when you are, when you are in this burden stage and when you're starting, so far whatever you're doing is not um, like I always say. It's not something that will spoil the life of another mm -hmm. person. It's going to in your jail. You're just doing your work, trying to get things together. Start now. Mm. Don't start now. And there are different tools available at your disposal. Okay. So it's not you are. Everyone has an advantage now. No. Because what. Our ogres, the legends, the kings that we so much respect, what they had to work with then 
It's not what we have now. So, and it's why when I see any one of them, I give them maximum respect. Mm. Because to have done what they did 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 then with with limited resources, it's it's nothing short of legendary and iconic. So, but now that everything is in your hand, this small phone that you think you have, it's so powerful. You can learn a lot. You can do a lot. And try different things. Don't don't say that this one thing that you're doing, it has to work and it must be it. no. Try other things. When I started creating content, I didn't just focus on I didn't just say that you are. In fact, that was I did as I did later. I was doing other things. But because I, I, I could try different things, I found that you are and I saw that it was what people wanted. Mm. So it's never too too early or never too late to start. Again, a life worth living is a life lived for others. Wow, thank you so much, Adebo Ali, for coming on the show. Thank We've you. learned a lot. We, I enjoyed myself, and I'm sure thank my you. viewers enjoyed themselves as thank well. You. Okay, so um, I don't like it when people come wow. here without this small gift. Uh-uh. This is from Talk to Be to you. What's going on, yeah? <laughs> Are you there? Okay. Talk to me. <laughs> you are doing well. Thank you. I just sent you my product You have right. not taken the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Take the answer first. That one is more important. <laughs> Thank you so much. This it is so welcome. lovely. Thank you so much. My Thank, you. Thank you. All right, guys. Mm-hmm. This is where I'll be drawing the curtains. I'm sure you enjoyed yourself. I sincerely don't wish he leaves. I can continue <laughs> this conversation. But I know he's busy. Time is not on our side. Till I come your way next week, do not forget in what everything you're doing put god first be determined and stay focused if you're yet to subscribe to this channel kindly do i beg of you you can also follow me on facebook as abiola ayomide at debio so i come your way same time next week by god's grace stay blessed bye talk to be share your experience